hello, whoever watches CGH, whatever planet you are from. Hello, I am an Earthling. My name is Little Movie Perp. I am a raptor. Big fan of movies. Big fan of uh, of genre movies. I'm a big fan of sci-fi or action. And I'm a big fan of talking to CGH about all three of those genres. And you're also a movie director. Oh, true. I'm also a, a film director, not a feature film. I had a feature film deal, but then COVID hit and I lost it with MGM. Yay. Um, I did do, I managed to do my, probably my most uh, known work is doing an episode of Ash versus Evil Dead. Um, uh, I did one episode in season three. I've, I only, I've only had uh, short films other than that, but they have made it to like Sundance and festivals all over the world. Um, DGA. <laughs> I am part of the DGA. I don't know what else to say. Tell us a little bit of uh, the process of all that. Of all that, okay. Um, so I've been I've been making uh, films like in my home since I was like a kid. Since I wasn't even old enough to see horror films, I used to go to Blockbuster, and then uh, my brother and I we would go through the horror section, and we weren't even allowed to see horror films but we'd love the covers right they had like the best art they had like the oh man is this disturbing or whatever that always grabbed my attention and then we used to go to my house and used to like recreate what we thought those movies were so like for example um we did a bunch of chucky movies because we got a doll we saw like the child's play it was like oh shit let's just recreate that and we would do um we do fake chucky movies eventually um i got into uh film school which i think is um well before that I've, I've always been into film. I always wanted to be a director since I was like in elementary school and stuff since like Spielberg and John Woo. Um, so I would always get to the closest I can to that because I, I didn't, we couldn't afford cameras or anything like that. So I did a lot of theater. Right. And in my theater work, I learned, I, I learned a lot about lighting, which was very important uh, to me. I was a big fan of, uh, like I said, horror films like Jalo films, Dario Argento. They always had like kick-ass stylized lighting. So um, I went to theater in high school, like a, a magnet program or whatever, just doing like technical, technical theater stuff, learning about lights and stuff like that. And then from there, um, since I was already a theater kid, I could sort of gather the the kids, gather the the students, the peers, and make little short films, which um, really, really, really helped. Um, and it got me into uh, film school uh, in the University of Miami, which is isn't the isn't the most uh, well-known, but whatever, they give you equipment. That's all I cared about. Um, in general, that's the attitude. I would suggest anyone in film, uh, you know, it's like, oh, this film school is not good. Or this one's good. It's like, whatever's going to give you a camera and a crew to work with, you go. And that might not even be film school, right? Film school might not even be for you. But yeah, from film school, I was, um, like I said, I'm always a horror fan. I did, um, I would only do like horror shorts. I would only do like horror stuff. I think they were the most fun, right? And they're the most where you get to like um, branch out and test your technical capabilities, whether it's an action scene of a chase or like, let's say, gore makeup and effects. All that stuff has to be planned and calculated and put uh, put into your production, right? Um, which I think really helped out a lot. In, in I've, I noticed um, like my films, uh, my short films over a lot of other students would get into like a lot of festivals, right? Because everyone else wanted to do like, dramas and, and stuff like that no one like did genre i don't know why everyone wants to be like a freaking academy award winner so it's like a lot of like yeah. <laughs> a lot of movies about you know sad things and depressing and breakups and stuff like that and and it's um, always the same cliches yeah 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 and it's and not always like there's there's always like a couple few there's a couple like my favorite um student filmmaker was this guy that never his none of his films made sense and i loved it for it because it was just like it was such a ride where it's like where's this going and it was just bizarre it was just he was like clearly like a david lynch fan um but yeah i i got i got really 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 lucky um i think what really helped me out in college specifically was because of my theater training or quote unquote schooling it's not training my theater schooling it really taught me to collaborate and i think that's the number one thing that's really helped me benefit out of everything is really being collaborative, really, um, really being community, like trying to, even now I'm trying to work on my communication. So I think that's what really like got me uh, like a little bit ahead in, in college over the other students. I was already collaborating. I already knew how to collaborate because I, I did theater in high school. So um, from that, uh, I think I got I got to do quality films that went that 
actually got to other festivals. And then I just kept working on that until I got into a major film festival, which was Sundance. And that was like my first like big break. I got one short film into Sundance people, one short film. And I got myself like a manager agent that was getting me meetings with Jordan Peele, Sam Raimi, like the actual Sam Raimi, um, the actual Jordan Peele, you know? Um, and that, that changed my life. Like uh, that Sundance got my manager, managed, I, I told my manager, was a huge like this is I was very lucky that Evil Dead the show just got announced, <laughs> so I was like, okay, can I get in that season two, please? And they were and, and my manager worked on it. I couldn't get into season two, but what he did was he made he got he got me into this thing called shadowing. Shadowing is when a director follows um, or like a a studio will pay for your room and board of wherever the production is, and they'll have you follow a director um, of a given. TV spot or whatever. I think Dave Filoni did that at one point. I think I yeah, heard yeah that. with George. He was shadowing at the point. Yeah, so I did that for Evil Dead. They flew me out to New Zealand in season two. I got to follow this awesome director, um, that uh, Rick Jacobson. He did the movie Bitch Slap. Any fans out there? Uh, I know I am. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then the next season, I got the call. They wanted me to do it, which was awesome. Um, it was. Uh, I got to do that, and it, it was like. I guess like that's the thing about Hollywood, right? I got that I got that one screening, right? And then I had a pitch too as well that apparently got to the ears of a lot of Hollywood people. So while I was doing Ash vs. Evil Dead, like I was getting calls like, hey, Jordan Peele wants to meet with you. I was like, what the fuck? Holy shit. Sorry, can I curse here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell? So in New Zealand, I literally had to go see Get Out because I hadn't seen it yet. I was like working on Ash just so I could like tell, oh man, your movie's amazing, which was fantastic. Um so Jordan Peele heard of a pitch that that was making its way around, which was very similar to the short film that I had. So that's usually how it works. It's not just I have an idea. It's like you kind of have to have an idea attached to something you already did or something you could prove you could do by already doing it. You know, there's no other way you could prove you did it. Uh, like the fanciest talker, I'm sure they could get jobs. But for the most part, it just seems like because I had a pitch and a short film with that pitch, that I got meetings with Sam Raimi, that I got meetings with um, uh, uh, the, the head of Miramax at the time, because this is, I think this is around the time that Weinstein was getting, you know, uh, he was getting booted, right? So the Miramax yeah. or Miramax was, um, they were just like super like, holy shit, we're looking so bad right now. They got a new guy. And I got a meeting with the head CEO of Miramax who was cutting me, who wanted me to cut a check. But at the time I was like, no, I want to keep Jordan Peterson. I'm not gonna. No fucking way. Uh, I'm not Jordan Peterson. Oh my god. Jordan Peele. Oh my god. I said Jordan Peterson instead of Jordan. <laughs> that would be a whole different. Clip thing. Get out of that and say perp is. <laughs> perp is trying to make movies with Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Canceled. Canceled as hell. But yeah. Um. I guess that's sort of the the sort of the the the. The give or take of it. So yeah, uh, another thing. Why I met um, Sam Raimi, I was awesome. I'm not gonna. I'm. I don't mean to boost my ego, but I was awesome on set of Ash vs Evil Dead. I know the Evil Dead franchise, like amazingly, and I'm super, super funny and, and nice. So one of the things I would do is make sure I would say hi to every single crew member, every single one, and they appreciate. They really did appreciate that. They're like, no, you know, they're New Zealand. So new director does that. not every director does that. You know, it gives. So, you know, it's easy and they're because they're beautiful people too so it's awesome to just talk to them um yeah you had a question sorry i was oh yeah what draws you towards the sam raimi like ash evil dead type stories um it's actually probably what drove people to marvel it would drove people to like so a character like star lord in guardians of the galaxy ash is like a goofball he's an idiot but he's like he's so relatable and he's so like, and because of that, because he's scared, because he'll, he'll always do like the wrong thing or do something funny rather than the right thing. You kind of have to crowbar. Yeah. You, ha you have to like sort of push him to do the right thing. Made him super relatable, super entertaining and just funny. Um, I compare, I, I, I think a lot of things of, of like, I've, I've said several times, I think, a lot of that Marvel formula, that idea of, you know, we're, we're, we're losers, but we're all in it together. It's sort of, I, I feel like there's a connection between that and like the idea of Ash. And then it's like, okay, Ash is this goofball in this war, but 
but this world is kind of like serious death is serious these demons really want to eat souls they're like they're gory they're crazy and here comes this freaking clown <laughs> you know it, it, that that messes everything up for them yeah um, i think there's something kind of what successful about the mcu with certain characters i think there's some, there's a connection there i gotta like sort of think about it and word it better and come up with examples but i think that was my connection my connection to evil dead is just there's no other movie like that there's no like if movies were a personality there's no personality like evil dead like to this well, day it's, it's one of the first uh horror movies where the perspective is from the demon exactly exactly it is it feels like that and 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 um and no one ever no one could ever repl no one's replicated that or even attempted to replicate that and it's funny because we have so many evil dead clones right but none even of them ever do the dead evil dead style. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Even the new Evil Dead is like, ah, oh, we're gonna stay away from that. That's like strictly like a Sam Raimi thing. Um, and what's beautiful about that is is that um, Sam Raimi the whole time is like he never says I'm doing this shot because it's cool. <laughs> He's uh, he always says no, I'm doing this shot because I in my mind this is the best way to tell a story. Like this is the best way to tell this story. And so it's like that's almost like it's. He wasn't he's, him not thinking that these are like amazing, cool, like editing tricks and camera shots. Him just saying this was just my natural instinct is just like, yeah, that's why I can't be replicated. We need to we need to have another guy like that. You know, I think the closest we ever got was Peter Jackson, maybe back in the day, like when he was doing his horror movies, he had very, very distinct sort of look and style that sort of reminded me of Raimi. He was probably influenced by Raimi, honestly. So, I don't know. Yeah. What what made you uh, choose the uh, dinosaur avatar? Uh, it was just clearly the coolest one. Everyone freaking loves dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs. I am trying to push for dinosaur movies outside of Jurassic World, and and now sixty five. Unfortunately, stay away from that one. Um, I want more. Di I want a good, um, studio pushed horror dinosaur movie, like a really really good one. Good effects. It's like a ninety million dollar budget. One location, sure, so we make that budget fly, but like a good horror dino movie with like A, a plus act, Brad Pitt, freaking Emily Blunt. I want a good horror dinosaur movie. So this is my campaign for that. I picked this avatar. Ash and Evil Dead uh, features lots of intense and dramatic moments. How do you work with actors to bring out their best performances in emotionally charged scenes? What are these questions, CJ? Did you, did you um, write and have these down before? Yeah, or? yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Good for you. Um, it's, it's, um, look, there's a, for, for something like Ash vs. Evil Dead, you're going to know the moments that the actors want, right? You're going to know, like, okay, for, for my episode, we had a big, um, big scene where a big character dies, and one of our mains, Dana, pretty much was like, you know, seemed like they were in love with him, right? So it was a big emotional scene. When I read that, I knew that Dana was going to want to give it everything she got because she's normally funny and everything. She's doing action. Oh, my God. She's going to do an awesome crying scene. And I know, again, my experience working in theater, those are big scenes for actors, no matter what. So what I did when I'm scheduling this with my AD, who we were doing all the schedules of how much we allow for each scene or shot, right? I'm, I'm scheduling. And I told him that for that scene specifically, for the Dana scene, let's 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 work around and speed around everything, all the other shots, all the other setups. So when we get there, we give her a lot of time because I know she'll appreciate that. It's not going to be a rush thing. Let's give our actor a lot of time. So that was the first thing I did. Um, and then telling her, you know, she really appreciated that. So we got to roll like a good uh three or four like because these actors like one of the things about especially with the main cast they know their role like they you you never have to do another take like they're really good like they, they feel at home they know how they want to say things and it's mostly usually it was aligned with what i thought because i've watched the show so it was like really cool like like a uh, synchronicity there um but for that scene when she when she did that i was like okay we're gonna do at least three takes and she loved that she was like thank you so much at least three takes right at least we ended up doing like five, I think, uh, of her doing crying out and trying to make this guy live again. So that's one thing. Um, 
I, I think I could answer that question with because outside of that, these actors that do these TV shows, they know their characters like so well. They know what they're going to say. They know how to say it. They know what's not going to work. I only had to tell Bruce uh, Campbell, for example, who's an amazing artist, who like um, I only had to tell him once uh, one direction, which was like, hey, can you just do a beat for the edit? <laughs> do like hold hold between these two lines. That's all I said. That's it. That's the only direction. Everything else, he knew what to do. He knew what da, da, da. we would talk about it or or what have you in terms of what the scene is. But he knew what he was going to do in that scene. You know, um, that's one way. And and then also just giving him being very honest. Uh, one of the things I like to do for other productions uh, when I'm talking to an actor is like a lot of the times actors are going to have to, like, especially when you're not working in, in Hollywood. It's been, there's no stand-ins for them. There's none of that, right? So they they're probably gonna, pretty much going to have to stand there. And, and deal with a lot of waiting, right? So one of the things I like to do is tell them straight up, uh, this one's for me, please be patient, and we'll do one for you. When, when I mean like that is like, hey, you're going to have to be a prop here. I want to get these visuals down. Um, and when I say we're going to do one for you like later on or uh, the next shot, that, that's what I mean by like, hey, Dana, we're, this is all about like your acting. It's not about like the lighting needs to be perfect. The camera moves. This is all just stance. We're going to stand still. We're going to let you act, you know? So that's what I like to do with actors is like pretty much be honest. Like this for me, this is for me, this is for direct. This is so everyone thinks I'm an awesome director. Sorry. But then um, make sure it's like, don't worry. You you have a couple. You have a couple coming towards you where we're going to show your acting. And that that's, uh, I think that's benefited. Another thing that's benefited uh, my, um, my work. Yeah. Um, how has your directing style and approach to storytelling, how has it evolved over the years? I care a lot more about uh, character than story now. Um, I used to be a, a story setup guy, and that, that has made, made it really hard for me a little bit um, in terms of writing. I always have awesome setups, awesome pitches, how I got all these meetings and shit. But I have trouble sticking the landing. A little bit where it's like where do we go for the third act like that's another thing about horror that kind of like is the most difficult aspect usually is like that third act when you're like okay am i going to explain what's going on or is it scary or not to would it get is the movie not going to get bought because i didn't explain how ghosts exist in this world like you know it's it's a bunch of like what do i explain what what do i not explain is it scarier if i don't um i already lost track of what the question was um so you you're fairly new at YouTube as well. Yeah. But what got you started with the whole YouTube career? Uh, well? Like I said, I had a feature film I was making. I had my my first feature film deal in MGM. Uh, we were filming um, in Colombia. We were literally building sets. Uh, we got some really good actors already hired and we were looking for, uh, we were in talks with some pretty big, uh, pretty big. Uh, I want I want to say for me, they're a listers. I love um, John Leguizamo. We were in talks with John Leguizamo for the starring role. Um, it, it never finalized, but we did get like the, the, we did get the, his, who was going to play his, his daughter who ended up, uh, who, ended, who was like a phenomenal actress. Um, she was amazing. She was going to be an up and comer. I was I was really looking forward to like you know sort of uh, doing her big break or her, her her you know coming out party if you will that all that I always like dreamed about doing with like a you know finding the next Jamie Lee Curtis finding the next you know um, Naomi Campbell like all the, there's so many great stories of amazing actors coming off of horror films and I wanted to be one of those I always I always said like oh I I want a fresh face no matter what we want the start one starring role to be a fresh face that's gonna have to stand up. Um, but then COVID happened, um, and I had to, I had to fly back. And then there was a huge, uh, which is very, very public, huge regime change that happened in MGM. We lost, they lost, uh, they lost Orion films, which was the subsidiary, subsidiary, uh, company we were doing it with through MGM, uh, owned by MGM. And I just lost, uh, I just lost the movie and, and I, I was very depressed for a while. And uh, I just decided to start a channel and start just, you know, just doing little music video stuff and maybe getting more involved with certain things. And I ran into like uh, this, uh, this channel, actual fandom that I really enjoyed. I ran into this other channel, Mad Max, 
the Mandalorian movie madness. And that opened the doors to all these other people that uh, I just like, uh, I just became really fond of. I became really fond of the discussion. I, I felt that there was a lot of movie talk happening that I just, it, I felt I could contribute in a more positive way <laughs> and sort of dispel like, you know, how these things work a little bit or, you know, just, uh, I felt I could contribute. I think there's a lot of like people like that now. I think COVID did that with a lot of people. Where it's like, oh, yeah. like, people in the industry are actually talking over here, you know, which was fun. And I'm not part of that. I was just like, I got stopped, right? I was on my way. I got stopped and I got on my, on my way. And I was, um, I just sort of fell in love with the communities here, and fell in love with the discussions. Um, and I'm still working on my stuff, but it was like, oh man, I still, I still would like to be a part of this. <laughs>